Today I'm going to do some free SO2 measurements just to make sure my wines are staying safe out there. If you like these kinds of winemaking videos, be sure to click the little subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified for future videos. Now, I personally really like to monitor the SO2 in my wine as I enter the aging period and also when it's about time to go into bottle. Those are two times when the wine's going to sit for an extended period of time and be very vulnerable to microbial spoilage or oxidation. So by keeping those SO2 levels adequate, you're really going to virtually eliminate that risk. You'll really, really minimize the risk of things like vinegar, so you don't want your wine to smell like a jar of pickles or olives, um, acetaldehyde, that old port sherry smell, or just general browning or other microbial or bad yeast types of spoilages that can happen with your wine. Now there's a few ways you can test SO2. I've previously shown you how to use the aeration oxidation method, and that's a pretty inexpensive method, but it's also kind of slow. So as, as you get deeper and deeper into winemaking, you might want to have a little bit more convenience, or if you have a small winery, you want to be able to just rip through those tests really quickly. So the test style that I'm using today is the ripper method. And to make the ripper method even easier yet, um, this is a Vinmetric uh, product. It's the SC300. And they also have one called the SC100. It's a little, little bit simpler and it's a little bit cheaper and still does the exact same thing if all you want to do is measure free SO2. So you're going to spend a little bit of money on the kit. This is something that maybe if you have some winemaking buddies, you split on the actual kit. If you have a winery, it's kind of a simple, pretty cheap thing for you. And then when you buy the chemicals that go with this. You've got acid solution, reactant, and titrant. Um, these are going to be about just under $50, but you can run about 50 tests with it. So you're looking at about a dollar a test, which I think is about the cheapest you can run a test if you ignore the price of the actual unit here. I've got a Hanna, or actually this is a, yeah, Hanna stir plate that I use for anything that I have to continuously mix, but you don't really need this. You can run the test just by constantly swirling it. It's just going to make things a little bit easier on me. And we'll go ahead. We, we want to grab some samples of wine. I'm going to go grab those now. You don't want to let them sit forever because those sulfites are going to kind of oxidize as I'm talking. So we'll grab a couple samples and I'll show you how to run this test. So I've got my three samples here. I wrote little numbers on the sides of the wine glasses so I can keep track of everything. And I'm just going to go ahead and get my stuff all ready here. You'll get two pipettes with this little kit. So I'll put a pipette in each of the reactant and the acid containers so they're all ready to rock because you don't want to take forever when you're doing a test like this. You don't really want the sulfites to start to fly out once you've added your acids and reactants. Now I will um, take my, I'll get my little cup ready to go. I'll put it on my magnetic stir plate here. And then you want to take a sample of titrant. I'm going to take a five milliliter sample here. So we've got five milliliters of titrant. And then we'll take a sample of our first wine with the 25 milliliter burette. Go ahead and add it to your little cup here. And 
then I'll get my stir plate started. And just add a bulb of reactant and a bulb of acid. It says about two milliliters. And this is one of those ones where you don't really have to be exact on these additions. You just want to have enough. So it'll be about two. And then we can start titrating with the titrant. So first we'll turn the meter on. It says SO2, which is where you want it to say. And we'll just start adding a couple drops at a time here. So you're looking for 20 beeps continuously, and I think we've hit it here. Ideally, you want to hit it with just one single drop if you want to have the most accurate titration. But for me, I want to be really close, but I don't need to be exactly spot on the money for just making sure my wines are safe. So I'm going to see how much of the titrant that we've used. So if you read the number here, it says basically 3.5. 3.5, starting at 5 millimeters, milliliters. So 5 minus 3.5 is 1.5. And the calculation for Vinmetrica is um, 20 times that number. So that means I have about 30 parts per million in this wine. Now the pH on this particular wine is 3.5. And if you pull up one of those graphs online, to figure out exactly how much you need. At 3.5, you're gonna need about 44 parts per million. So I would probably wanna add, um, I mean, it, I would add 14, but I'll actually probably add about 20 parts per million because just this whole process is gonna eat up a little bit of SO2. So we'll go ahead and we'll just dump this out. I'm going to run another test real quick. I'm not really going to rinse this stuff because in these wines, I'm going to get a little bit of water in the burette if I rinse it. So I don't care that much that I've got a 30 parts per million wine, just a little micro bit of it there. All right, that's 20 beeps, and this one is titrated, so we'll stop it. And this wine took, so it reads right now, 2.25. So it took about um, 2.75 milliliters. So that would be about, um, times two is 5.5 times 10 is 55 parts per million. So this wine right here is actually pretty well protected. I'm not gonna have to worry about this particular one. And then we'll just run one more test here. The things you're gonna wanna be super exact with in this test are the titrant and the volume of wine. You're really gonna wanna nail those numbers because those are gonna go into your calculation. And where I said earlier, the SO2 reactant you just have to have enough of it. 
So whether you have 1.75 or two milliliters isn't gonna be a big deal. And then the same goes for the acid. All right, and we're reading um, about 1.8 on this one. So that gives us, um, we've used 3.2 milliliters. So that's 6.464 parts per million. So again, this wine's gonna be good to go. And if I'm gonna bottle a wine, whatever the target number that I actually want to reach based on those charts is gonna be, I'm gonna go ahead and overshoot that by about 10 to 15 parts per million usually. And the reason I do that is because that oxygen that I'm hitting that wine with during that bottling operation is gonna suck up probably 10 to 12 parts per million of free SO2. So when it's all said and done, then I'll end up roughly right where I wanna be and just have really nice aging potential of that wine. And you're not gonna ever smell it. So the target I'm mentioning is 0.8 parts per million molecular SO2. And the threshold for someone to ever really sniff or smell the SO2 in the wine is um, two parts per million. So that is, you know, two and a half times more. And if you overshoot by just a little bit, it's really not going to be a big deal here. I will mention, I talked to Vin Metrica and try to understand exactly what's happening during this test, just to kind of get a better handle on it. And it seems like what exactly we're doing here is we're taking a sample of wine of a known volume and we're acidifying it. So we're adding the acid, we're adding the reactant, and then we're adding this titrant. So this titrant is some sort of iodine-based solution. And normally you'd use a starch indicator, which you'd have to try to visibly see some sort of color shift happening. Now, when you're using a red wine like this, it's really hard to see a color shift. Um, so then we're adding this iodine to the wine. The free SO2 is binding with that iodine. So you're not, not seeing it, not seeing it, not seeing it. And when the free SO2 is gone, the iodine will begin to show. So you start to pick it up on this little current meter thing. And what we're seeing here are nano amps of current. When the iodine starts showing up on the meter, you start to get this beeping, which indicates that the free SO2 is gone. And that's where you come up with your calculation of how much iodine did you have to add to eliminate that free SO2, hence back to how much free SO2 do you have in the wine. This is a pretty cool little test setup though. It takes probably one to two minutes per test. I like to just line them up and run most of my wines. Like usually in one season, they're all going into aging at about the same time. So I'll kind of run as many as I can. And also the other thing I like to do is when I have my wines out like this, it's a good opportunity to smell them. It's a good opportunity to taste them. Just make sure everything's on track. Um, you can kind of catch things early, maybe figure out some potential blending options you might want to consider. Maybe consider what kind of oak or how much oak you want to add. So it's just a good opportunity. Now, the one I said the one wine I have, I need to add just a little bit of sulfite. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add 20 parts per million. And I'll tell you exactly how I'm going to calculate how to do that. So one part per million equals one milligram per liter. So that kind of gets you into the right units to work with. Um, a six gallon carboy of wine is about 23 liters. So if I want to add 20 parts per million, it means I want to add 20 milligrams per liter times 23 liters. Um, and then, unfortunately I didn't bring a calculator down here. So 20 times 23 and I'm adding it in the form of potassium metabisulfite, which is probably what most of you guys are going to be doing also. So potassium metabisulfite contributes about 57% by weight to free SO2. 
So I'll take that number, 20 times 23 divided by 0.57, and that's going to give me the amount of um, potassium metabisulfite to add. And it's going to be about just under a gram, probably about eight tenths of a gram, or the calculation will say 800 milligrams. Make sure you don't add 800 grams, that would be insane. So what I'll do is I do want to top these wines back up. So we'll take a little sample of wine, maybe some of this wine, maybe I'll take a wine off the shelf here, and I will dissolve my potassium metabisulfite, just dissolve it super good into a sample of wine and add it back to that carboy of wine so it's nice and topped up to the neck. And then if you can, you want to give it a nice good stir. I don't have to probably get super carried away with stirring because I'm already at 30 parts per million, so I'm really pretty well protected. Eventually it's going to integrate into the wine and the beauty of pouring it onto the top is it's at the top of the wine where it's most likely to interact with oxygen. So I'll stir it up as best I can and then I'll put the airlock on it and we'll say that wine's going to be good to go. I probably am not going to have to touch it for a year, but in reality it's going to go into the bottle a lot sooner than that. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, if you're getting pretty serious about wine, I would definitely recommend doing sulfite testing. And I know this equipment's not super cheap, but the cost of one ruined batch of wine is probably going to pay for it. So it's something to consider. And I'll put a link to this stuff on the description of my video. And if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure to check out my website, smartwinemaking.com. If you have any more comments or questions about this method too, be sure to mention them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.